Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, <clears throat> and just to reiterate, I'm going to talk um, about a recent paper that came out where it's talking about the global environmental consequences of 21st century ice sheet melt. So mostly ice sheet melt in Greenland, Antarctica, and also uh, on land uh, glaciers. So the paper, this is a paper, it's open source. Okay, so you can just uh, search for the title yourself if you want, and I'm going to explain the main details of this paper. Before I get there, though, I was talking about some of the things that are important as background refreshment or knowledge to know. And one of them is that when ice sheets melt, there's some strange behaviors that happen. Um, so if Greenland melted sufficiently to cause a one millimeter global average sea level rise, um, then the sea level would actually drop a mil over a millimeter near Greenland because the ice on Greenland acts as a gravitational pull and it pulls water towards it. So as there's less ice on Greenland, the water, there's less pull, the water moves away. That lowers the sea level in this location. Sea level would rise uh, more than a millimeter on the opposite side of the planet in the mid Pacific in this case. Um, the other factor is that the you know, as the ice pushes down the land, the, uh, the, the density of ice is about 0 0.9 grams per cubic centimeter. The density of continental shelf is 2.7. That's a three to one ratio. So ice sitting on top of the land will push it down. Three kilometers of ice sitting on top of land would push the land down about a kilometer in the steady state situation. So as the ice melts back, the land rises up. Of course, there's time constants associated with this. It takes time for the land to do that. But the net effect here is that the sea level falls around this region and rises up there. So this is a, a, this shows the gravity effect. We've got the Greenland ice sheet. It pulls the water towards it. This is in the Pacific here, the sea level. As the mass of the ice decreases, it melts back. Um, this, in this cartoon, you just show some of the ice being lost. The water pulls away here, the water rises on the other side of the earth. Okay, this is the gravity effect. Okay, the other, another effect is that the ice sheets press down on the earth's crust. So the earth's crust is depressed. Okay, um, so here's the sea level here. The earth's surface slowly rebounds after the ice leaves. The surface, so it looks like that the uh, sea level is is falling there, okay. And again, there's uh, so it's like a foam bed. Here's an example. You sit up in the morning, the foam lifts up. So where there was a hole before, it's now basically back in shape. This process is called glacial isostatic adjustment. It takes place over many thousands of years. Another thing is that the ice melt changes how the Earth wobbles, okay. So the Earth, actually, the mass of the planet okay, is distributed, the Earth has a rotation axis, which it's rotating about. Um, as you distribute mass on the surface of the Earth, then you can change the, um, the shape of the Earth, if you like, so it can cause wobbles on its axes, and this can affect regional variations in sea level rise as well. And I have to wonder um, whether there's a connection of rapidly melting glaciers in Greenland and the wander of the magnetic north. The magnetic north is behaving, um, it, it's moving rapidly um, the last few years. They update the um, GPS and compass systems every five years, but they couldn't wait five years. They had to do it this year, I believe after four years, because the movement is so large, it affects navigation, um, mostly for, for high um, precision applications like military stuff. But but anyway, um, I'm thinking carefully about a connection. I mean, the magnetic field is there because of the liquid outer core, you know, the iron and, and ions that are moving, you can move, cause a current, causes a magnetic field. That's why, you know, if a planet has a magnetic field, it means there's a molten or liquid uh, core somewhere or not core, but could be the mantle. Anyway, there's moving liquids, moving charges, creates a magnetic field. If the body is completely solid, there won't be a magnetic field. Okay, so um, 
And uh, this site here, antarcticglaciers.org, you can look at post-glacial rebound and get more details. So here's peak glaciation, the ice sheets there, it pushes the land away, so the land is depressed there. It can bulge up here at the edges, okay? Um, and during deglaciation, the weight, the ice is melting back, the weight is relieved, this land will move up, and around the edges it will move down, the opposite effect. Okay, so there's an image here which shows what's going on. This is an exaggerated view of, of the geoid. This is showing how the rebound, when the ice is there, it's pushing down the land. When the ice is, there's less and less ice, it melts, the land moves up, isostatic rebound, and the ocean is not pulled towards it as much, so it also drops here. So it, it looks like the sea level is decreasing in that region. So um, this is a paper where there's a good diagram in. This is Glenn Milne. He's at, uh, um, he, he's an Ottawa guy. Um, he looks at sea level rise. And this is the image. I, I couldn't get into the paper on this computer. Couldn't open the PDF. They wanted 31 bucks. So anyway, this is the, this is the rate of change of isostatic rebound. So what you can see is because the ice was covering this region at the, during the last ice age and the ice is gone, this land is still rising up, you know, at very fast rates here. Also, so the red regions are where the land is actually rising up, the rate of rise. And again, I'm not sure the units here. Is it millimeters per year or uh, I'm not sure. Um, and uh, again, the ice, there was more ice on Antarctica. Um, there's less now, so the land is rising up in those regions. Look how f now the, the biggest decline of the of uh, the biggest drop here is around these regions here, okay? Because this is uh, again showing you this is because of this bulge effect, right? Which is right here. So so the land rose up here um, as the ice was forming. It was depressed here rose up here, now the ice is left, so the land is rising here and dropping on the outskirts. So this is exactly what we're seeing here, the drop on the outskirts and also here. Okay, so this is the isostatic rebound effect. So let's go back into the paper. Um, so I've talked about some preliminary things here. So basically, existing government policies commit us to surface warming three to four degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels by 2100, according to this paper. This will lead to enhanced ice, meat, ice sheet melt, etc. And that ice sheet discharge, the meltwater coming off the ice, is not modeled in uh, CMIP 5, coupled model intercomparison project phase 5, so effects on climate from this melt are not captured. So here they do simulations and they look at the how the increasing meltwater from Greenland will substantially slow the AMOC. Meltwater from Antarctica will trap warm water below the sea surface. So it, meltwater from Antarctica will create a, a lens of fresh water at the surface. That'll trap the warmer salty water below causing a positive feedback to increase Antarctic ice loss. That warm salty water gets under the glaciers like it did in Thwaites and uh, bored through a cavity in the space of a few years, a massive cavity in that glacier. Um, now in terms of the absolute numbers of sea level rise, I'm not going to talk too much about them from this paper. I think they're way underestimating what is going on and uh, but uh, you know we're trying to get the basic ideas here. So here so let's look at the figures here. So what they've done here is um, they this is this is their um, the, the models and, and the you know based on the data and stuff and and uh, you know putting in the data do, putting what, doing what we know a combined hybrid data model. This shows the net mass balance for Antarctica and for Greenland. The scale here is 1900 to 2100 with 2000 in the center here for all of these images. So they're showing that, okay, this would be the total net mass balance loss for Antarctica and for Greenland. And then you get, this is the surface mass balance. Okay, so you can actually be growing mass at the surface they're showing here in Antarctica, dropping 
you know, not dropping slowly and then dropping faster. Um, in Greenland, this is uh, basal um, ice melt. So this is melting of the glacier at the bottom from below, increasing quite significantly in Antarctica and in Greenland up to a point and then slowing down. And this is a dynamic ice loss component. So this is ice breaking off and cascading at the edges of the ice. Okay, so they can take all of these things and then from them they work out the uh, sea level rise. And again, uh, you know, don't worry so much about the absolute numbers. I think things are happening much faster. But what they're showing is they're, they're not using any melt feedbacks. This is the IPCC representative concentration pathway, the 4.5. And this is the business as usual where we are right now, the high emission scenario. So they can get sea level contribution, Antarctica small, Greenland the largest in this case. And with the higher emission scenario, uh, you know, the, the levels are higher. And then when they put the melt feedback, so compare this graph to this graph, there's a lot more, the, the, the sea level is a lot higher if you include those contributions. Um, this is a high emission scenario, sea level is a lot higher, the contribution from Antarctica increases significantly. Okay, that's what they're showing. They're, they break it down and they look at Antarctica and they look at Greenland and they have the different components. So you have the surface mass balance loss here so it's significant on Greenland, we know that the surface gets above zero and there's melt ponds on Greenland and the reflectivity drops. Um, notice on, on in Antarctica, there's very little surface melt because the surface temperatures are much lower than zero. The basal mass balance, this is the mass balance at the um, where the ice is meeting the bedrock. And in a lot of cases, that's well below sea level especially in West Antarctic, some, think, some in East Antarctic, and some parts of Greenland, but not so much. So this is the, the basal mass balance is the, mo is the biggest component here. So for example, here, it's, it's uh, almost the full component here. Here it is, and there's actually a reduction of the dynamic mass balance. So, so if you add all the, so this is the net here, this is the net. And uh, so you've got the three components, surface mass balance, basal mass balance, dynamic mass balance, and then from the addition of all those, you get the net mass balance. So you can see the regions of, of, of Antarctica, West Antarctic, very, very uh, fast melt on glaciers, the Thwaites glaciers and the Pine Island Glacier, PIG, Pig Glacier over here, and then this area here in the Ross Sea, also very high melt, but not nothing much on the surface here in Antarctica. And in Greenland, uh, these are the regions where there's quite high um, mass loss. Okay, so the distribution, so this is sort of the distribution. This shows you the weak points, the Achilles heel of, the, of Antarctica and Greenland in terms of causing significant ice melt. Um, and again, the actual absolute numbers could be argued. There'll be deviations from this, but this gives you a good idea. Um, now, these are some of the effects that happen. So. Um, if you account for that fresh water melt from Greenland and Antarctica, this is the air temperature. This is, these are 2100 um, model patterns at 2100 of changes in the parameters. So air temperature, there'd be significant melt of Antarctica and that effect would, would cause a reduction of air temperature. Notice there's lots of other effects, of course, but this is only modeling the effect just due to the ice melt. This is the effect of the ice melt on these particular region. So air temperature, um, sea surface temperature be cold, would be colder south of Greenland near Antarctica because of the ice melt. This is the uh, subsurface ocean temperature. The ocean temperature is at about 415 meters. And what you see here is the freshwater lens of, from Antarctica means that the water down below, there's less strat there's more stratification, less mixing. So the water at depth, this is about 415 meters below, is actually increased in temperature and this water can undercut the ice and also increased here. And this, this is the temperature. Um, this is a change in sea level. And what you see is, you know, you see the, the minimum of, of change is right near Antarctica and right near Greenland for the reasons I've discussed already. And this is some other stuff on variability.